Good morning. It's been so long since we've done a morning routine. I thought now would be a great time to share all those AM products that I've been using in my skincare routines. So it is allergy season and I definitely get very affected. I get a lot of sinus pressure. Uh, my eyes get very watery and itchy, but my skin gets affected too. And it took me such a long time to realize that like my seasonal allergies and then the flare up on my skin seasonally were connected. It took me a long time. So I want to share with you the products that have been working to kind of keep my skin calm, um, to help keep the inflammation down. Uh, I did get some inflamed pimples, as I'm sure you can see. It's right there on my face. Um, but I want to show you uh, the products that have been helping me deal with that as well. But I want to make this a chatty video too. So I thought it would be kind of interesting slash fun. I don't know. I just really wanted to share my thoughts, I guess, on influencers the whole topic. No, um, that's a really big topic, right? But I just kind of want to share about like my experience, um, I guess as an influencer, how I see things working and, um, how can you tell a trust for, trustworthy influencer from a not trustworthy influencer? So I want to talk about that and kind of share my opinion. So if you are so ready to get this morning routine, a relaxing, chatty morning routine uh, started, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> So I already washed my face and I just use water and a washcloth. I mean, there's nothing fancy here. I don't use any products. I don't use cleansers or cleansing waters. Just plain old water um, is plenty for my sensitive skin. And then at nighttime, I'll do a full double cleanse. All right, so the first product I'm going to use is the Primera Miracle Seed Essence, which I absolutely love. Now, like big warning before you at me and tell me I am using this product wrong, I actually really like using this before hydrating toner. This is an essence. Um, it's not a first essence, but I like to use it first. So I like this before toner because it just fills my skin with so much hydration that it actually allows me to not put on too much product, if that makes sense. So I put on one layer of the essence. It gives me so much hydration that I don't have to put on three or four or five layers of toner because I've already gotten such a good base of hydration. So I just kind of wanted to like put that out there. This is actually something that you would technically use after a toner, but it just works so well for me first. And then I am going to go straight in for my toner. I got to get my hydration in before we start chatting. And this is the Soon Jung uh, Relief Toner. And when I put my toner on, I do usually layer it up just a little bit because I, I, I need that hydration. I'm always a little dehydrated. But what I I like to do is just kind of put one layer on just kind of like take a second and then just see if my skin wants more just kind of like tune in and pay attention to what my skin is telling me so while i'm doing that let's talk influencers um i wanted to talk about this because um, i was actually having a conversation with a friend and um i was telling him i was like you know i just feel like people misunder uh, misunderstand influencers so much they some people think all influencers are untrustworthy some people just don't understand how the industry works and a, r a big reason why that is and there's so much misunderstanding is because yeah, there's definitely influencers that you can't trust out there, but a big part of it is because we just don't talk about it. All right, second layer. I think that I actually cringe at the word influencer because it's kind of gotten a bad like rep. You know what I mean? Like so many people think that influencers are fake, they're phonies, you know, they're just, um, you know, dialing it in, phoning it in, if you will, for a paycheck, right? And it's really hard to trust those people. I remember this was maybe a year or two ago, but I remember there was this big kind of like expose story that happened between like an influencer couple where they uh, they decided that they wanted to get engaged. But instead of just getting engaged and like maybe taking a picture of it, they sold their engagement like adventure slash story uh, to the media, they sold it like you would sell a television show. They were like, first, we're gonna, you know, the, the man is gonna, you know, put her on this like treasure like hunt or whatever and she's gonna get on an airplane and then she's gonna go there and she's gonna go here and she's gonna go here and finally she's gonna end up at the Eiffel Tower where he's gonna propose and here's the ring and, and it's like, oh my God, like that's your life. And you just sold it like it was a television show, like a commodity. That's just really strange to me. And I think that is strange. I think it's entertaining for a lot of people, but I think it's also very strange for a lot of us. And it feels 
incredibly manufactured. It feels incredibly fake. Like what kind of real emotion is behind this engagement story when you just planned it like absolutely minute by minute, picture by picture, post by post, caption by caption and sold it for money? It's it really makes you wonder about the intentions of these influencers. Yes, there are definitely really fake people out there who are untrustworthy. And there's also a lot of really fantastic people who are incredibly trustworthy. And um, being able to figure out the difference between those two isn't always that obvious. I understand that. Um, it's not always that obvious, but once you understand how things kind of work, you can you can decide for yourself if somebody is trustworthy on the internet. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna be using the Buy Wish Trend Quad Active Boosting Essence, another essence. This has been amazing for my allergy like ridden skin. This is, I got so many great anti-inflammatory ingredients in here that really just kind of calm down the skin, soothe the skin, and it's this really, really nice lightweight essence. It's got a touch of moisture to it, it's got a touch of propolis and honey extract in it, so it's that type of moisture, um, but it's in a really thin, lightweight, kind of watery essence, and it just layers on so nicely, but it has made a huge difference in the comfort of my skin as I uh, recover from these allergies. So one of the biggest misconceptions that I've seen um, about influencers is like once the influencer becomes quote unquote big, right? Once they really have a huge following, that's when they become untrustworthy. I've seen this a lot. Um, people think that these bigger influencers, you know, maybe you followed them from the beginning when they were much smaller or when they were up and coming and then they become really big and you start to not trust them as much. And there's a lot of reasons why that might be. And I think you would have to take that influencer by influencer, like person by person, because everybody's different. But I see that as like a general sort of like thought process that people think big influencers are untrustworthy, but smaller influencers are more trustworthy. And I just really don't think that that is true. As somebody who is a small influencer and has been a a completely like irrelevant, like invisible, right? Influencer up to now, I can tell you that like I've, the, the majority of the mis, like misleading and straight out lying that I've seen has actually come from small influencers. It really, really has. All right, so for my serum, I'm gonna go for the Buy Wish Trend Polyphenols in Propolis 15% Ampule. So I've been reaching for the Buy Wish Trend when I have inflamed pimples, particularly on my skin. And that's what happened to me. You know, my allergies sort of hit my skin. My skin got really itchy. It got inflamed, it got irritated. And then, oh, hello, some big honking pimples showed up as well. And when I use this, and especially when I use it in combination with the quad essence, it really, really helps facilitate healing. It brings the inflammation down, it brings the size of the pimple down, and it really helps it heal faster. It's like I can't talk and like pat <laughs> my skincare in at the same time. Like it takes too much, I put too much on my face too. It takes too much concentration. So the reason that I say I feel like there's more dishonest behavior happening in the smaller influencer community versus the bigger uh, influencer community, a lot of that comes down to the difference between a gifted uh, opportunity to work with a brand or a sponsorship. Now, what's the difference, right? So brands definitely want to work with influencers because it's profitable. It's profitable marketing and advertisement. And anytime an influencer talks about a product, anybody online with a following talks about a product, it is advertisement. And so brands want to get behind that and make sure that certain influencers are talking about their products, right? However, they work with influencers in different ways. Sometimes they just give products away for free, right? That would be called a gifted opportunity. Then, then on the other side of that, you a brand can work with an influencer through a sponsorship. This is a paid opportunity. So not only are they giving them the product for free, they are also paying them for a piece of content, whether it be an Instagram post, a TikTok video, an, a YouTube video, whatever, right? they are paying the influencer for a piece of content. They're paying them basically for an advertisement. This is something that comes not only with money, but it comes with signed contracts, right? And there's usually certain expectations involved with sponsorships. 
The majority of small influencers are not working on sponsorships. They're not getting paid to talk about products. And the reason for this is, is that the influencer space is just very crowded. A lot of people want to be an influencer. A lot of people want to get on social media and um, create a following so that they can either receive products for free or maybe, you know, have a shot at um, doing it as a full-time job, right? So because there are so many people who are willing to, uh, who are kind of at the beginning, right, with small followings, they're willing to work with brands for free. And so that's actually changed the space over the last couple of years. Brands have definitely shifted their budgets, right? You know, they are not paying every single influencer that they're working with, even though it's very profitable to work with influencers, they're not putting that much money into it. And so what they do is they give a lot of free product out to a lot of influencers, but they do reserve a certain budget for sponsorships. And they're going to put that money more into the influencers with really large followings because they're going to get a better payback, if you will, right? They're going to get a better return on their investment in that influencer because they're reaching more people through that influencer. So that's really how the industry has changed. I mean, it used to be at the very beginning, a lot of it was, all of it was like paid, but now um, they've really moved more to kind of a gifting model where they just give products out for free. Now, here's the thing about gifting, and I'm, I'll am i be honest with you, I primarily work with brands through gifting. The majority of the products that you see here, some of it I've bought with my own money and some of it has been gifted to me either from a shop or directly from the brand. And that's always gonna be indicated in the info box for you guys what uh, was given to me, received for free. Um, I rarely work on sponsorships. It does happen occasionally and it really does help, you know, help support this channel and help me keep going making videos, right? So I'm not saying sponsorships are bad, but gifting is really what a lot of influencers are working on. And that is where things can get a little bit confusing, not only for the influencer, but also for the subscriber or the follower. So the reason that I think that gifted opportunities should be scrutinized, right, just as much as sponsorship opportunities is because the gifted opportunity is very unregulated. You know, when a company comes to you, and at least this is my experience, and wants to pay you for something, they're very upfront about what they want. There is a contract involved, there are certain expectations, but everything is kind of laid out there on the table, right? When you're in a gifted um, position, it's very unregulated, and every every opportunity is going to be different. Now, there are some brands who will come to you and give you free product, but they have a lot of strings attached. You'd be surprised. They don't just send you stuff for free and um, say, have fun. You know what I mean? It's not, I hate that they call it gifted opportunities because um, it's not a gift. It's not because you're so wonderful that they sent you for free. They expect you to talk about it because they expect you to advertise their product. And sometimes that can come with strings attached, like posting deadlines, usually within two weeks of receiving the product. Now, when it comes to skincare, you and I both know two weeks to test one product is not enough time to write a full review. That's ridiculous. But that is what a lot of people expect when they send out a free product. That's what they they really expect back in return. Other things that I have seen have been um, specific dates for posting. And you see this a lot, particularly on Instagram, where um, you'll see a lot of your favorite small bloggers, particularly, they all kind of come out with the same review at the same time, usually when a new product is released. And sometimes this is called like a project kill. Um, and basically it is it is meant to flood, right? Flood whatever social media platform you're on, flood it with reviews, flood it with that product so that you really get to the consumer, right? You're really letting the consumer know this new product is out and these influencers love it. There's also something that I think is incredibly um, deceptive and that is what they call consumer reviews. And that is when they give free product to the influencer. And maybe you don't have to post on your Instagram or your blog or your YouTube, but you need to go and post on um, Sephora.com or you have to go and post on the Amazon listing or you have to go, right? 
this is shady. This is shady stuff. And that's what Sunday Riley got in trouble for. They were having their employees write fake Sephora reviews for their products, right? It's the same thing. But what they're doing is they're paying small influencers with free products for consumer right reviews because when you go and read those reviews on sephora.com or amazon or whatever it has to be from like a verified purchase or has to right sephora does now have this thing on their website where it will say like i received the product for free or something like that but still it's really really shady and it's deceptive for consumers i personally as a influencer right i choose not to engage in those types of um, campaigns uh, if a brand is going to send me something for free um I, a you need to be very upfront with me about what you want and b i don't really accept any strings attached you know for me really if you want to send a product to me um and for me to try out uh, and it's something that I'm interested in, I'm happy to do so and I will share about it, good or bad, right? And when I'm ready to. Um, that's just really, that's just like the very like basic level that I ask for when I do enter into a gifting opportunity with a brand um, because you know what I mean? Like I can't. I can't do all that other crazy stuff. I almost forgot eye cream. This is the Cosrx Advanced Snail Peptide Eye Cream. And I really like this one. Um, I've got a review on this if you guys wanna check that one out, but it's a really nice light but moisturizing eye cream. So here's like the insider information, right? And this, by the way, is not just true of small influencers. This is what I know to be true of some small influencers, but I'm sure that this can apply to bigger influencers as well. And that is that some influencers feel that they have more of an obligation to the brands that they work with for free products than they do with their followers, which is crazy to me. Now, what I mean by that is I, I see this a lot behind the scenes where um, an influencer will receive a product for free from a brand, right? So say they receive this product for free um, from the brand, they try it out and something is wrong. Like either they don't like the product, something's like crazy about the product, right? It messed up their skin. I don't know. There's something that they don't like about this. And then they're saying to their other influencer friends, well, I don't really know. I have to write this review about the product that, that that got sent to me for free, but I don't really like it. But like, how do I say that without pissing the brand off? Really? Um, okay, so you're, you're, you're anxiety ridden and you're worried about your review because it can make the brand mad. So how are you going to soften the blow or just not talk about it at all? so that the brand continues to send you free stuff in the future? Is is that the reason why you feel so obligated to please the brand rather than tell the truth to your followers? That to me is insane. And I'm not saying that these people are being like really deceptive. It's just like, where like where are your priorities and that it's not necessarily going to be with telling the truth to a following it's not even going to be with with your following for some people so you really have to look at your influencers and try to figure out where their priorities stand because just because they are not being directly paid by a brand some influencers are actually feeling very very obligated just because they got a free $30 product or something like that. Now, as some of you guys know, I do use prescription tretinoin at nighttime. I'm still going strong with my Curology prescription, and that does make my skin just kind of a little bit more overall dry. So I do like to make sure that I am packing in all those barrier loving ingredients. So you know, Straight A Liquid Gold, you, all the time. I am using this in the morning time. And what I do uh, like to do is mix this, like one pump of Straight A Liquid Gold with a little bit of the Oliverier uh, Squaw Squaw Oil. <laughs> this name, Squaw Squaw Oil. That's right. Um, This is a really nice um, Squaw Lane Oil blend. And if you haven't heard of this one before, it's because it's from the Oliverier Baby line. <laughs> I'm glad I took a risk on it though because it's a really nice lightweight oil. It's perfect for the morning time. So just a little bit of the oil and a little bit of straight liquid gold. And that just kind of helps keep, it keeps the liquid gold from feeling like a 
kind of thicker cream, like a thick cream layer on the skin. Um, it just makes it a little bit more fluid and it absorbs just a little bit easier. And I am just taking my good old time uh, with this skincare routine right now. Like I'm just chatting my heart out. If this was a regular like morning routine, oh, I would have been done like in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> maybe not less than 10 minutes. All right, so now that I am super shiny, let's let that um, just kind of settle in and absorb a little bit. And this is like, this is like the visual podcast, right? Like just relax and talk. So um, yeah, that's definitely why I think that, you know, that argument of smaller influencers are more authentic versus the bigger influencers. While, you know, case by case basis, some influencers may kind of lose touch as they get bigger. I would say that we still need to look at smaller influencers with just as much scrutiny, right? You know, influencers who have 2000 followers on Instagram versus influencers who have, you know, 500,000 followers. I think that we need to look at them with the same scrutiny. A lot of the stuff that I've seen happen in the smaller influencer community is kind of crazy. It's kind of shocking. And it would really make you feel very suspicious no matter how many followers you have of the intentions of the person. Okay. Okay, so I just went in with the Iliune Edo Ceramide Concentrate Cream. Now, I have been experimenting with some other moisturizers, particularly lighter ones for my AM routine, but um, this actually works morning and nighttime really well for me. The reason why I wanted to go with this is because I'm gonna film some videos um, later this afternoon and I just wanna go with what I know works because last, was it last week or two weeks ago, I used the Bonajour green tea, this stuff, Bonajour green tea water bottle. I use this stuff. <laughs> I use this and it's really nice daytime um, cream, uh, very light and hydrating. It's, it's fantastic. But you know what? This made me really kind of shiny, almost like into the grease zone, right? Like <laughs> grease lightning. It made me um, on camera. So I was like, mm, I don't want to repeat that again because I had to powder my face down crazy. So yeah, I mean, I think when it comes down to it, the biggest question a lot of people have when they're looking at a video or an Instagram post or what have you from an influencer, the biggest question that you have is like, how authentic is this, right? And the thing is like our gut instinct tells us immediately, but we just, we don't always listen to that, but really just kind of question why why are they posting this? You know, um, why are they posting this? What's the intention behind this? Because I personally find when I kind of ask myself that question, like, what was the point of this piece of content? If I feel that it's something that is very self-serving to the influencer, like if it's like a look at me kind of post, right? Like, aren't I so hot? Aren't I so sexy? Aren't I so cool? Aren't I so whatever, right? If it kind of has that vibe to it, um, it's probably not very at least to me and my gut instinct and what I respond to is not that authentic, right? Um, if, I, of course, if I read crazy stuff, like if it's a review and it it's a product that I've used and I mean, okay, so this, this one, this one time, <laughs> this one time I read a review about drunk elephant uh, vitamin C. Um, now I've used that product before and, so, and this is, this, it seems harmless. It's not though, because this, this person was describing the vitamin C and they said that it smelled like oranges. That product smells like hot dog water, like old hot dog water. You know, when you boil hot dogs in um, a saucepan, like in water, right? Just to warm them up. And then the, the hot dog tinges the water with a scent. That's the smell of the drunk elephant vitamin C. And this person was saying it smells like oranges. Now, the person could very likely have an incredibly messed up sense of smell, but I kind of feel like maybe they were not telling the full truth. <laughs> Though I have a really hard time <laughs> understanding how somebody could pick up um, oranges from hot dogs. So, this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes I see crazy stuff like that where I'm just like, why Why can't you just say what it, it really smells like? It can still work for you. There's always good and bad things to every product, right? So like, just tell the truth. Some people just are not capable of saying a bad thing for whatever reason behind it. And sunscreen is Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sunscreen. I love this stuff, you know. I've been using this for so long now and I am curious to try other sunscreens just because I'm somebody who is curious about skincare and likes to do reviews, right? But um, 
beyond that, like there's really no reason to change it up, right? Like it just works so, right? I am piling it on because being on tretinoin, my skin is so sun sensitive. And make sure that you're putting a good generous amount on your neck too. This is something that I did not used to do um, for a long time. I would just kind of forget about my neck, especially when I first started wearing sunscreen, I'd stop at my chin. I'm like, why, 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 why did I do that? I don't know. That's, that's it. We're done. So, uh, that routine seems super elaborate, right? But like this routine actually only takes me like 10, 12 minutes in the morning time to accomplish, but I was chatting my head off. So I think you guys know that transparency is important to me. I think you already know that, right? But I just felt so compelled to talk about this particularly because transparency, Transparency when it comes to influencers and how the industry works makes it easier for everybody. You know, the less of, of this that is done behind the scenes and behind closed doors, the more that it's done out in the open and just very transparently is good for all of us. And it really helps us understand how things work, but it also helps us really decide who we do and don't want to follow online. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, um, I've been thinking about doing more of these, like just sit down, do your routine and just talk kind of videos. So um, if you enjoyed it, please let me know uh, if I should make more. And if there is a certain subject maybe that you have in mind for the next one that I should talk about. So let me know in the comment box below. If you enjoyed the video, but you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. I release two new skincare focused videos every single week and turn on notifications. If you're on Instagram, you want to see more skincare content from me, uh, come join me over on Instagram if you want to. I I post lots of mini reviews, routines, um, all kinds of skincare adventures over there. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, night, wherever you are in the world. Um, I hope that you are doing well, that you are safe, healthy, and happy. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.